It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints, next on Madden NFL 25. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Superdome in New Orleans. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. the punter Bradley Pinion on to get us started and we are underway from the Superdome and he takes this near the 25 just a little pass there call it the 26 the Saints heading out for the first time and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold and Carr continues to produce good numbers on paper. He completed over 68% of his passes last season while also throwing 25 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. But as impressive as those numbers are, the numbers he's seeking, big numbers in the playoffs. And we expect him and his team to be back in the playoff mix when January rolls around. Carr going to throw right away. That'll be caught right side by the rookie receiver. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Heck of a start. A 30-yard pickup on their first play from scrimmage. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air. Nice chunk of yardage there. And then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Shotgun now for Carr. Now get this out to Kamara. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. But he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. And that's the way you get an opening drive going. Pick up the first down, convert on third down, and how about doing it old school style, doing it with a running play. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he went nowhere, well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. Yeah, oftentimes at that spot, you're trying to work against a defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. Shoves him away, and he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job 
and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Kamara up the middle, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Eddie Goldman in on that play defensively, and he finishes it off behind the line. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. Card out of throw. Oh, he's got him in wide open, complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Already, he's top 50 receiving yards in this first quarter, and he's got a first down. Now Carr. Out to the left, that's where the tight end Moreau is. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Foster Moreau from eight yards out. And the Saints will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. They gotta love that. Nine play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've gotta go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Blake Groupie now for the extra point. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So the Falcons make their way out behind their new quarterback for 2024. Signed back in March, the veteran Kirk Cousins. And coming off of an offseason where Kirk Cousins was coming back from an Achilles injury, he thought that was going to be his biggest challenge. Instead, the Falcons drafted Michael Penix out of Washington in the first round. And while that was a jolt, Kirk Cousins has a great ability to just shake things off, move forward, and let his talents come through. Now Cousins. And a complete to Drake London. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. And this will be a Falcons first down as good running gets them to about the 44. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Back to Robinson now on first down. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. 
throwing his cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. Charles already trailing by a touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Sets up the screen to Robinson. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen, where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. On first and ten, it's Robinson. Brought down by Willie Gay. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Now second and five. Throwing Cousins. This pass is caught by London. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. From the gun, here's Cousins. He's got his pass catching tight end, that's Pitts. And the Falcons are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Cousins now. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Jarnell Mooney, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Extra point attempt to follow here. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And finishing it all off was Darnell Mooney with a touchdown reception. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. Oh, now how about this return? And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now we're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. 
Okay if I show my age a little bit, partner? Because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. To throw, it's Carr. There's Chris Olave. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. Here's Carr to throw. That is caught. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Anytime a ball is thrown in the middle of the field and it's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now, Carr again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. A big 30-yard play on third. Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Carr. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Throwing now is Carr. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And he'll go down here at the 12 yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Car to throw again. Oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? So Carr departs, and on is Blake Groupie for the Saints field goal. And yeah, this one will be a 29-yard attempt. And his kick is right there. It's good, and they take the lead here now at 10-7.
So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles, with his better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because, look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're going to put more points up on the board. Now, how about that? Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz. And the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Mike. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Robinson up the middle. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football as they've got it with a third down coming up. A tall task ahead of them here needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Now a timeout here, at least for the moment. Looks like one of the Saints is injured, shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line to throw Cousins. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Second and 10. Working out of the gun, Cousins. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw it through contact and short of the sticks. Cousins to throw it. He's going to drop this underneath for Robinson. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And that's off the right upright, and it bounces away no good. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. So plenty of leg, but it's the accuracy there that lets him down. Yeah, he hit it really well. I think this might have been good from 55, but you'll see it just conk off that upright, and they're denied a chance at three points.
The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Here's Kamara off the draw. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. The Saints on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. He lets it go deep for Olave. And the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And he takes this thing way down into Atlanta territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I'll tell you what, this is not going to be a fun discussion at halftime for this defense. They've been absolutely taken advantage of in the first half. And here's another play for big, big yardage. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. He'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Here's Carr. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Five yards that time on the completion, and now it's third and goal. Kamara is into the end zone for a Saints touchdown. Sometimes offense, if you get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Here's Groupie for the PAT. It's good to make it 17-7. So the drive there took six plays, and the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They find themselves down 17-7 as they start this drive first and 10. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gain five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do... They go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. 
They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Third and five. Cousins. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Down to the 10. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Drake London, 64 yards. And the Falcons have got it back to within a score. And they just ran the fly route there, didn't they? You broke it down perfectly. He ends up catching that one and taking it all the way into the end zone. Well, thanks. It was pretty simple to break down, though. I mean, that's just a guy going, running on the go route, making a play. Speed, kills. speed, <laughs> speed. And what does it do? It kills. There you go. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it was finished off by a touchdown catch from Drake London. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. The Saints offense and Chris Alave getting set to take over once more. And seemingly every time they've looked his way in this first half, it has resulted in a big play as borne out by the numbers. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. Now they have to be pleased with the way that they move the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 48 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and wing in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. A 10th carry for Kamara. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Now Carr. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. And his kick is good. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that. But let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. 
The Falcons offense and Drake London headed back onto the field. And it may be time for this defense to start throwing a second defender his way because whatever they've done, it has not worked in this first half. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look and repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Now Cousins. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes a quarterback look a whole lot better. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 34. Play action now, Cousins. There goes a deep ball, in zone. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. Partner, they've been aggressive airing it out all game long and no better evidence than those last two snaps. They weren't going to beat this coverage, though, two plays in a row, and that one falls incomplete. Now a second and ten. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. Cousins from the gun on third. And it's going to be knocked away and incomplete. That could have been a huge play, but give the defender credit. Stayed calm, stayed collected, and kept himself in a position to make a play on the ball without a penalty. Fourth down, and the attention turns to Falcon kicker Young Way Koo. This will be kicked from the 42. It's a 52-yard attempt. Koo knocks this one through the post, and that cuts the lead down to just three, 20-17. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Kamara gets it again on second down. Breaks the tackle now with Alley. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Oh, 
to throw his car. Throwing quickly to Wilson. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here comes the Saints punter now. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. The Falcons offense and Kirk Cousins getting ready for this next possession. And he's had things all his way in this first half. The number's sensational as he'll look to add to him with another drive here. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. They work now on second and nine. To throw his Cousins. Over the middle, caught by London. So the completion good for six yards. And now we've got a third and three. I think as he began this throw, you saw that the area was congested, but he has a lot of confidence in his arm, and he fits that one in there nicely. They pick up the catch. Not much yardage afterwards. Throwing, Cousins. Here's a screen for Robinson. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The Falcon passing game looking good on this drive as they get the first down. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Cousins now sets up the screen to Robinson. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Two yards to go, second down. Throwing his cousins. He finds Robinson. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Cousins again. That's caught left side, the tight end pits. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Here's Cousins. 
And this will be caught by Mooney. And a result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Second and two. First down marker at the eight. Now Cousins. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no game. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Koo knocks this one through the post, and that's going to tie things at 20. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And they'll have time for one play. There's two seconds on the clock. He's going to loft it deep right sideline. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They are all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. And a nifty return there all the way across the 40. The Falcons offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. In a tie game that's going back and forth, oftentimes teams get really conservative because they don't want to make a mistake. But after that return, I think the offense coordinator just took a deep sigh of relief and said, okay, I can open up my playbook now. Let's see if he attacks. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. Robinson on a give right side. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. Cousins. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Well, partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. 
Unfortunately, that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Six yards on the boot. The coverage holds him to just three on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and ten. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. Carr. Over the middle. It's complete. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll bring up second down. Now Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 14 yards is the pickup. First down, New Orleans. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Carr. Alvin Kamara reeling it in on back-to-back -back plays. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that will bring up second down. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. Car going to throw. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Matthew Judon in there to take him down. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. The visitors' offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart, and that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here. A little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. 
On the give, here's Robinson. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Here is third and five. To throw, Cousins. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. Hand off now to Robinson. There's Robinson showing the flash. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. 42 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. Well, as we all know, possessions are crucial in a tie game, and let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Cousins to throw it. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. That's the former Buckeye Pete Warner getting the sack. All about the offense so far in this drive, putting something sustained together. But the defense, they responded on that play. Second and manageable became third and long. The drive marching to the end zone is one play from stalling out. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. He'll look to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. This one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Defense simply not fooled by the draw there. Well, they were thinking run to begin with, and what they tell their defensive linemen is, play the run on your way to the quarterback. If someone shows, go get him, and that's exactly what they did. Now Cousins. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Kirk Cousins with three touchdown passes now in the afternoon. And the Falcons have broken our tie. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. That time, a nine-play drive. And the Falcons score to cap it off.
Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And they have had their problems moving the ball through the air as we take you through some of the action from earlier. This secondary has played about as well as you can. Many times they've left this quarterback with nowhere to go with the football. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's Carr to throw. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. To throw, it's Carr. Here's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. Now he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on here to punt it away. Here's McLeod on the return. Only 29 yards on the punt there. Definitely not his best. And it will be Falcon football. The visitors offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And he had it going in the first half, that's for sure. He's really had his way with his secondary. They've been powerless to stop him. And he'll look to keep it rolling right here. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. This a second and seven from the 37. Cousins throws right back to London complete again seven catches for him now in this last one a first down Side, they're going to go option here. And no room that time. Getting it to about the 46. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. To throw his Cousins. Throw left side complete to McLeod. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 41-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Throwing Cousins. That's complete to Mooney. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down.
Here's Robinson. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. 50 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. Cousins now into the hands of London. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. 23 yards, the final tally. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off of big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on it. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. And he's got it. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. So a little extra time to ponder this third and goal as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. Robinson and Robinson will not get there great defense at the point of attack and a stop him short of the first a loss of a yard and it brings up fourth this is a long drive offensively wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others this feels like one of those doesn't it to me three points here a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance could not be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. Oh, some strong running. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. So that time, they got the left guard with a hold. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Throwing on second and long. Carr. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. 
It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. The Saints on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This will be a tough third and 18. Now Carr. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. Will go down as a gain of six. And it'll be fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Now a fair catch signaled for and made right about the 43-yard line. No return, but it goes down as just a punt of 31 yards. And they will take over first and 10. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Good push from the offensive line, and they've done well so far to build this lead. Now they've got to get things to the finish line, and that's a solid pickup there to begin the drive. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 78 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Again, it's Robinson. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. So the completion good for six yards, and it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Throwing his Cousins. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. On the left hash mark, this is a 38-yard attempt. Koo knocks this one through the post, and that will extend their lead even further. So that maybe not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And they can't bring him down. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. 
See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of scald out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. A.J. Terrell coming up to make the play. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion right here. Play action. Now it's Carr. Wilson's got it on the crossing route. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 32-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. To throw his car. This one finds Wilson downfield. And he'll be touched down at the end, but a big play on that one. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. A man who's been busy this afternoon. It's Kamara again. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. Second and a couple. Here's Carr. Touchdown! Alvin Kamara. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Saints have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, he is putting in a great all-around game, Charles. He already ran one in for a score, and now they utilize him in the passing game. And they put a lot of pressure on a defensive coordinator and a defense, don't they? Because they're used to him as a runner. But it turns out he's just as dangerous as some of those receivers, and he showed it right there. You don't pay enough attention to him defensively, he makes you pay. The point after, good by Groupie. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So here comes the kickoff, and what now is just a one-score, six-point game? And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. This offense and their running back headed back onto the field. And it's hard to believe you could run the ball a whole lot better than he has. The vision, the cutback ability, the acceleration, it's all been on display throughout. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Crossing route and complete. He's got Pitts. 
And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards on the play. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's where they're going to ride. Here's Cousins. That's out wide here for Robinson. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. So five yards here, five on the play, and that'll make it second down. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area. Evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. He'll look to throw. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities. And he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. This is first and ten. Car to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Look with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Here's second down. From the gun, it's a run for Kamara. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. Now Carr. That's caught by Wilson, and he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Plenty of time, and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Now second and four. Throwing his car. 
The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Carr. He's going to let it fly. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked off by A.J. Terrell. And the Falcons have just about sewn up this football game. Well, you knew you had to take some chances here with the clock winding down, needing a touchdown to win it. And that one might have just sealed their fate. Yeah, and that's the nature of the two-minute drill. The offense trying to go downfield and make their plays. But defenses, they're sitting back watching everything that they do, but not too far back. They want to be in position to make a play on the ball, and that they did. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And checking the timeouts. They do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans. Number two. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. Well, this ball game was close throughout. Remember, it was neck and neck at intermission, neck and neck at the end, but a great job to come in here in a tough environment, Charles, and get the victory. Yeah, tough environment indeed. How about all the people we can hear shouting from their seats right below us, partner? They weren't real happy that their team didn't keep the home field. How about how these visitors came in, calm every step of the way, even with all the pressure, and found a way to get out of here with a win? So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.